I want to talk a little bit about the Durham investigation. Uh, huge blockbuster news. news. Huge <clears throat> news. Big news. I'm glad. Which is, by the way, in the mainstream press, crickets. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it, you know, there's, it's eking out. It's definitely getting out there. So the we're gonna. Um, I'll tell you what the Durham investigation is all about. Um, in a nutshell, it is an investigation into how the FBI probe, FBI and CIA probe, uh, into Trump's, into the allegations Trump had with collusion with Russians. So they're investigating the investigators, if you will. Right. This was started years ago, and there have been some bombshells that have come out, and now we have another bombshell. Uh, I've got a story uh, for you here. Pull it up. It's bigger crime than Watergate is what Trump issues for his statement on the Durham report. And what it comes down to is that they have found uh, that the this whole Russian probe is a farce. They have indicted their third person, and it is a cybersecurity attorney for the Clinton campaign. His name is Michael Sussman. Michael Sussman. Right. They have found that a as a Clinton campaign lawyer, he was heavily involved into these bogus allegations of Trump colluding with Russians. And what Sussman did was worked with a tech company mm -hmm. and an internet provider company, mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable. They hacked in, essentially. They got access to the servers in Trump Tower. Wow. Which is phenomenal. That's shocking. Except it's even more phenomenal because after Trump was elected then, they got into his servers in the White House. And it's... it's That's, uh, that is bigger than Watergate. He's not wrong. Oh, it's 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 huge. Yes. Um, so they paid a tech company to infiltrate the servers in both those places with the goal that they fabricate a narrative that Trump was working with the Russians. Everything was to try and piecemeal things together to make it look that way. So this Michael Sussman has been indicted uh, also for lying to the FBI for... Um, um, conveying false allegations. So the FBI did a got a FISA warrant mm -hmm. to be able to also spy on Trump based on false allegations, including the uh, the Steele dossier, the Russian dossier, right. right? Which was a bunch of fake stuff that came from the Clinton. And it wasn't everything campaign. kind of based on that bogus Steele dossier. I yeah, mean, that every, was kind of like was the narrative that they were all supposed to follow. Exactly, and everyone was on board. The Democrats, you know, Cl the uh, impeachment, yada yada, and we were all played. Now, a lot of us knew that we were being played, but a lot of people didn't because the mainstream media just kept reporting it. Um, Go ahead to Donald Trump's statement here. We'll read this briefly. And uh, so, uh, Save America, Donald Trump, a statement by the 45th president. The latest pleading from special counsel Robert Durham provides indisputable evidence that my campaign and presidency were spied on by operatives paid by the Hillary Clinton campaign in an effort to develop a completely fabricated connection to Russia. This is a scandal far greater in scope and magnitude than Watergate, and those who were involved in and knew about this spying operation should be subject to criminal prosecution. In a stronger period of time in our country, this crime would have been punishable by death. In addition, reparations should be paid to those in our country who have been damaged by this. Wow. So, I wholeheartedly agree. People need to go to jail over this. This is huge. And I don't, you know, we're not going to see Hillary Clinton go to jail. We're not going to see the big player. They never are held accountable. But it they, means it gives totally new meaning to that chant in all of his. In all yeah, of his lock things. her up. Right? I mean, yes. it's like really actually now we're like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Now, this guy's not the only person that's been indicted. There's a, a guy named Igor Denchenko mm -hmm. and another one, Kevin Kleinsmith. They were indicted in August and then in November. So this is slow moving. It's, it's, it's well, Exactly. So, <laughs> pull up uh, the next story, if you would. This is a story from back in July of 2020, the, the Durham investigation, what we know and what it means. Now, this particular uh, article is not favorable to Trump, not leaning to Trump. What they're doing is just looking at the investigation and the involvement of the Attorney General William Barr at the time. Mm -hmm. and, he's standing over his shoulder there. Yes, he's standing, exactly. Now, what they, what they said, they, they, uh, the William Barr, the Attorney General at the time, tapped U.S. Attorney John Durham to look into the issues related to the origins of the FBI, Trump, Russia investigation. 
he is a, a person of significant credibility. Mm -hmm. He was on um, Eric Holder, so right. So he's bipartisan. Eric Holder, the Attorney General for Obama, um, expanded his mandate to examine CIA torture allegations. Michael M Mukasey had started him looking into uh, CIA's in, uh, destruction of interrogation tapes. Mm -hmm. So he's been on both sides. He's been neutral and highly respected. So he was brought in to take a look at this. This particular article is looking a lot at why is Barr um, so agitated. Uh, he's giving out information he shouldn't be. They're really looking for angles where they're trying to disrupt the investigation because this, the, the people, that wrote this article and similar believe that there's not there's no there there mm -hmm. and so they think that Trump and Barr are just creating this fake narrative that Hillary had her campaign uh, did the wiretapping when in fact it turns out to be true but what they say um, it's very interesting in their analysis they say that Barr's actions of of being so agitated about this there's three possibilities one is that the evidence that Durham uncovered is so objectively damning that Barr's commentary can't delegitimize it, no matter what. Okay. Another one is that Barr's judgment is, is distorted by zeal. Because, and, and then the third is that he's just an out-and-out -out partisan hack. What they say, and again, this is July of 2020, mm -hmm. when Durham announces the results of his investigation, we will surely have a better sense about which of these three possibilities is correct. And I think what we're finding out is that it's the first one, <laughs> the one that they did not expect. That did not age well. <laughs> See, and he, the thing is, you know, this, this, was, this investigation looked like it was going to ripen mm -hmm. in the fall of 2020. So they were expecting it to be an October surprise. I remember. Meaning it's going to be the sudden help to, to Trump before the election. Um, and so they wanted to delegitimize it by, by calling out Barr and that they were... Um, I don't know why it took this long. I mean, it's it's been expansive, very expansive. I, I, but I mean, this is a long time. It really has taken a long time, but it, it couldn't actually come at a better time in this way, just simply because there's nothing looming right now that they can be accused right. of. You know what I'm saying? They're, it's not right before the midterms. It's not right before any elections. So at this point, it is kind of a neutral time that they could. It is, and and it's never too late to bring people to justice. That's, That's what I want to see. These people.